Deploying custom iOS applications and macOS packages with Jamf Now is a fast process. And in this video, we're gonna walk through both workflows. So to begin, the first thing I want to do is log into Jamf Now and verify that I'm on the correct plan. You'll remember, Jamf Now comes in two flavors. Jamf Now Standard, which contains most of our MDM commands, deploying applications, restrictions, and so forth. And then Jamf Now Plus, and that's where you get everything on Jamf Now Standard as well as custom iOS app deployment and macOS package deployment. So to do that, I'm on my Jamf Now instance right here. I'll click on Jamf or my account name in the upper right, and then click on account. The second line I'll see here is my plan line, and this indicates which plan I'm currently on. So currently on Jamf Now standard, and of course I do need to upgrade before completing this tutorial. So I'll click on upgrade to plus. And this is just showing me, hey, there will be a pricing change with this upgrade, but you will also gain access to two powerful new features. If that's correct, click change plan, and I'll do that here. So now you can see in real time, my plan has been updated on this second line on this page, and I am now a Jamf Now Plus plan customer. So from here, I can begin deployment, and it's actually pretty fast. So I'll click on apps, you can see a number of applications I have kind of queued up from the App Store like Slack and Evernote, some really big names that you'll know. I'll add an app with this button in the upper left, and then I'll click on Upload Your App. Now, please note if you do not see this option, if Upload Your App is not appearing on your side of the screen right now, that means you don't have the correct account type. So again, go back to step one, click on your account and upgrade to Jamf Now Plus, then this menu will appear. Until you do that, you will not see this menu. So once you're here, it's actually a really simple operation whether you have a custom iOS application in a .ipa file type. So I've got one right here. This is my test custom application. I can drag this over. Or if you already have a package file that's existing as a .pkg, that's very important. Package files come in a couple of different varieties. If it's already in a PKG file type, then you're ready to go. You can drag this in and deploy that immediately. And you'll see this language right here on the bottom. This file should end in .ipa or .pkg. If that's true and it's a custom app, hey, drag it in and we'll do that right here. The upload's very brief. That was a small application. You can see a number of data points and then I'll click done. And this test iOS application is now available right here in my account. The same thing is true for a custom package that's already a PKG. I'm gonna drag it in, let it upload, let Jamf now do its thing. It's gonna kind of crunch through that package file. 75 meg, so it's getting a little bit larger there, but you might have uh, packages that are, that are uh, you know, several gigabytes, um, and that's okay too. You can just let it crunch through, let it process, and when it's done, enter a custom name right here. I'll just enter maybe Jamf now, and click done. So now both my iOS app and my custom package are both available right here in this applications menu on Jamf Now. Now, of course, to distribute these apps, uh, this app and this package rather, I'll click on blueprints, go into this sample management blueprint, and then from here, I've got a number of applications already configured. I will add these new apps from the menu right here. Jamf Now and Jamf Now add, and they will appear right here. This indicates, of course, that every device in this blueprint will automatically get this iOS application, or if it's a macOS device, this macOS package. So again, if you started with a .ipa file or a .pkg file, your journey is really complete. You have successfully deployed both types of files with Jamf Now. Now part two of this video is diving into something a little more nitty gritty, a little more technical, and that is the workflow for converting a DMG or a .dmg file into a package file, a .pkg file. This is really important because a lot of very popular software like Google Chrome, like the Microsoft Office Suite, are only available as a .dmg file, so they do not natively come as a pkg file type. Jamf now supports only .ipa and .pkg file types, so again, if you're deploying something to a macOS device, you need to somehow get it into that PKG format. 
And this is what we call repackaging. So you can do this with a number of tools. A lot of tools on the marketplace can do repackaging. You can find third-party tools, open source tools. If you'd like to use those, more power to you. This is really the time where you want to probably exit this video and dive into a video from that uh, developer to, to see the walkthrough on their solution. I'll be walking through in a solution that we developed first party. It's called Jamf Composer. It's really a native and integrated solution that's just really uh, streamlined and built for doing what we're gonna do today. So if you'd like to purchase Jamf Composer, it's $99 one-time fee for a lifetime license. You can buy that at jamfnation.com on the Jamf Nation store. So to begin, we need to go through a couple of uh, kind of setup or prep steps before we can dive into Composer. Now, I've got Composer right here. This is what Composer looks like when it's just kind of live and uh, you know ready to go. In fact, why don't I minimize this and just show you here is Composer. Just blank, ready to go. It's kind of a blank canvas. Before I can dive into Composer though, I actually need to open a program on my Mac called Keychain Access. You can see that right here. So this is Keychain Access. And what Keychain, here, why don't I minimize this? What Keychain Access is, is basically a, uh, a set of different uh, passwords and secure notes, and most importantly, certificates that I have collected here on my machine. So I need to generate, using Keychain Access, what's called a CSR file, a certificate signing request. To do that, I'll click on Keychain Access up at the top, go to Certificate Assistant, and then request a certificate from a certificate authority. I know this is getting, again, a little nitty gritty, a little technical, but just follow along, and this will look, uh, it should look identical on your side uh, as it does right here. So now I'll enter my email. I will leave the common name as it is. You can, of course, rename that here if you'd like to. The CA email address, you do not need to fill this out. Instead, click on request is and change that to saved to disk. So I'll click there and then I no longer need a CA email address and I'll click continue. And now it's generating that signing request, so that .csr file. I'll stick this right on the desktop, click save. And you can see that CSR is now right here and I can click done. So our workflow now with Keychain is really complete. I'll just minimize this and kind of move on with step two in this repackaging workflow. So step two, I'll actually open a browser window and navigate to developer.apple.com. Once you're here, click on account in the upper right and log in. If you don't have an account, you will need to create and pay for one. An Apple developer uh, program account is $99 per year, so you will need to pay for that upfront. This gives you the ability to do something very important in this workflow. It gives you the ability to sign packages. And this is required for distributing packages with Jamf now. So uh, if you do not have an Apple developer account, you might be saying, do I need this? Can I skip this, but still, deploy packages with Jeff now, the answer is no, you must do this step. So very important, I've already logged in. So this is my account, you can see it right here. What you do next is click on this giant button, certificates, identifiers, and profiles. Once you've clicked, this will kind of resolve and you'll see this page, the Apple Developer Portal. Uh, what this is doing though, this is really important that you change this. It's defaulting to iOS, tvOS, and watchOS certificates. We do not need that, of course. We are deploying macOS packages. So click here, navigate down to macOS, and then refresh that page. And you'll see I've generated a number of certificates recently. I'm gonna click the plus button and generate a brand new one once again right here. So it's asking me now, what type of cert do I need? Well, I'll scroll down and click on developer ID. Then I'll scroll down even further and click continue. And now it's asking, what type specifically of developer ID certificate do you need? I'll click on developer ID installer and then click install. Now it's giving me a little bit of data here about a CSR file type. I don't need that. I can just click continue. And now we click the critical junction where we've hit the critical junction of this creation process. To make a certificate, Apple is saying, before we can do that, I need a CSR file from you from Keychain 
to make sure that this is a valid certificate process. So I will choose a file on my desktop and we will do the certificate signing request and I'll click open. That's now loaded onto the Apple site and I'll click continue and we're ready to go. You can see the message at the top, your certificate is ready. So I'm all set, I'll click download. That is downloading right here. I'm using the Chrome browser. This might default to downloads for you uh, or a different folder if you've specified that. I'll just drag this over to my desktop and you can see it's a different icon because this is a valid certificate. So you're seeing a valid cert icon as part of that, uh, that file right there. And now I'm done. I can really cancel out of the uh, developer portal. Um, I'm set from that perspective. So now on my desktop, I need to do a couple of things. First of all, I will execute the certificate by double clicking. And that will open that cert on my local machine and execute here uh, on this Mac OS device that I'm navigating on. The second thing I'll do is then open up Composer. So here's Composer. And now it's time to start, uh, first of all, validating what we're going to build and then building that package. So the first thing we'll do is click on Composer in the Mac menu bar and click Preferences. Now, two checkboxes that you must check here. One is Build Flat Packages, and the second is Sign With, and then change this so that it selects your developer ID installer. You probably do not have this selected automatically, so make sure you select developer ID installer and you see the cert that you just generated now. Then I can click save and now it's time to start building our package for Google Chrome. So again, I will grab my DMG file right here and I'll drag it into the left hand sidebar just below the word packages. You see that word? I'll drop this right there. So now Chrome is available as a package. I need to convert to source. I'll click that button there and we'll let Composer do its thing. All right, Chrome is now converting to a source. I'll give this one more second. As it continues, you might see this pop-up window. Don't take any action, just let it sit there. It should resolve in just a minute. And there you go, you can see it resolved there. Uh, so now it is available as a source. So now that Chrome is a source, now we're ready to build as a package. So I've got Chrome selected. I'll click build as a PKG. Now what popped up here is uh, my ability to choose the save destination for this new PK, uh, PKG file. So I'm gonna choose just desktop, right? I'll click desktop right here. It's automatically selected and click save. It's building that package now. It's kind of going through uh, itemizing everything inside of that file, taking a look at that source file and actually constructing a PKG file type out of that. And now it's signing that package. You can see that right there at the end. That is a critical step. It must be a signed package to deploy with Jamf now. And at the end of this process, we have successfully created a Jamf, a, a Jamf now acceptable file, a PKG file of Google Chrome. So you can see this is actually identical to the old package file, the PKG file that I was using to demonstrate this process earlier on. So mission accomplished, we're good to go. This is now ready to deploy by just dragging it into Jamf now and deploying via blueprints. That's really the end of the repackaging process, folks. If you still have questions about this process or anything else relating to custom iOS apps or macOS package deployment, let me know. Hit us up at support at jampnow.com. We are more than happy to come alongside of you and make sure you succeed with this process.